past. There's 40 years of history behind me here. You see these Sherman tanks back here? Well, I've got the ultimate tanker, retired Command Sergeant Major Rick Young. He was the Sergeant Major at Fort Knox over the Armor School down there. He brought this collection with him to Fort Benning, and here it lies in these warehouses here on the back side. Again, Harmony Church is where we are today. And Rick, thank you for being here. As a lifelong tanker, what does this collection mean? Because you know a lot of folks don't realize this is the largest collection of armor and cavalry vehicles probably in the world. Over 450 that right. you got here and so this is kind of your baby. It's really special. Well I think what we really got to look at with this Bob is, is when you think about the history of our armored force and you think about the fact that this history is now locked up where people can't see it. It's important that we allow folks to understand this collection down here because like you said in this room alone uh, 40 some years uh, of history even more because you think about World War II we've got a lot of vehicles around uh, that actually represent the lineage heritage and honor of the armored force so when we brought all this down from Fort Knox and, and put it down here to teach and train the soldiers, in, not only the, the ones in now, but the ones in the future. We have this collection laid out so we can look at the different capabilities, we can look at the advancements. So really it's, it's just a piece of history, not unlike if you walked into an automobile museum and you see that whole transition of, of up through, you know, from the beginning up till now. So th it's just real important to have this collection uh, visible because many people don't know this collection exists and there's parts of this collection that probably people haven't seen in 60, 70 years as a total just because of how it's been stored. Well, you know, Rick, and I, I think one of the significant things here is these vehicles, although they don't run, it's probably one of the most complete historical collections in the world. Right. I mean, th th there are beyond museum pieces here, okay? There, there are pieces here that most collectors don't even know still, you're right, exist. And, and that's, that's just commendable for you to be able to, as a former tanker, I mean, it, it, does it give you chills to see these old, the stories, if they could talk? It does, and, and one of the great things about this collection, when you talk about the stories, occasionally we're able to bring folks in that served on these vehicles. Uh, we've had folks that served on vehicles, uh, the M26 that we have down there, um, folks that have served on that at the end of World War II that are still living that can tell stories about that vehicle. It was 300 of them in theater, only 20 of them had combat. Rick, I want to first start here with some of the modern stuff, okay? Everybody knows what a Humvee is. <laughs> right, but, you have your Humvee. But you guys go back. I mean, you, you've got 113s, 114s, 88. I mean, right. that's the thing about this collection. You guys have taken that thing all the way from what you can current, okay? And, and taking it all the way back. Well, when you, you go all the way back to the, the original Dragoons on horseback, and that's kind of where the mounted force comes from is, is all the way moving up through there. So when you get in and you start looking at vehicles like the Jeep, the Humvee, you know, used for reconnaissance, used for major transport, troop transport, just about everything, you know, the, the Jeeps in and of themselves were pretty dang universal on what they were being used for. So you see the collection from horseback all the way up to the Abrams, but you start getting pieces like we're going to walk and talk here. Uh, the Humvee, you know, it's it's baby brother from another mother, the Jeep. Exactly. Uh, and then we go down, we got some scout cars, some other things down here. Exactly. That not only represent the different vehicles, but they represent different times in history. Well, like the M20, the scout car. Right, M M20 scout car, command car, you know, different variants. Uh, you come down, you've got the Greyhound or, or the M8 armored car. And the other thing about, about the M8 you see is you look at the markings on Now we're going to talk about a piece of history. Uh, you've got the markings on there from the Constabulary Force, post-World War II. Exactly. A lot of folks don't really know much about that. They don't know that we had basically an occupation security force that took over. After the war fighting was done, World War II, you had a Constabulary Force, and, and these are some of the vehicles that, that would have been in that period and have served during that period. So when you see the markings, you see the vehicles, you start figuring out the role that they had, you see how detailed this collection is. Probably the most complete collection of American armor history uh, in the world. Well, again, now we move over. Again, same peacekeeping operations in World War II. Right. But when's the last time, I don't believe, I've seen a lot of scout cars, okay? Right. Armored scout cars. I've never seen one with the original top. I mean, th this thing is just complete. And that's what's really special about this collection. I mean, it's just like it was just taken off of a unit yeah. and put here. 
And, and I will tell you, the folks, and, and you'll meet Mr. Dyer later, but the folks that, that do this day in and day out, they, they go to the nth degree to try and make sure that we have parts that are original to the equipment. Right. Don't do a lot of repop stuff. It's all period correct parts. Well, to the point of when they, when they do a rebuild, they save the bolts that come out exactly. and use as much of that original as they can. I, I mean, when's the last time I've never seen a complete original half track with all its toys and bells right. and whistles? I mean, you, you just don't see that. And, and you know, that one, it appears to be in pretty good shape. I don't know what the mileage is, but it, it, that's the original paint. Right. And so, you know, now there's one other item of interest here that I know that our folks out there would want, especially collectors, especially guys who love armor, <laughs> is when's the last time, folks, you ever saw one of anything that was ever produced? And that's what I want to talk about right. next. Let, let's talk about this piece over here. It has the first slot, obviously, in, right. in armor row here. But th this this T5, I mean, this is the only one ever produced. Right, an experimental medium tank. You know, as as the army progressed through its its history, um, hey, we need bigger armor. We need different types of vehicles. You know, you have a lot of experimental stuff. So this is one only one was produced. Uh, twin 37 millimeter guns on the top. Uh, the the thing that you see and in, in throughout the collection, you'll see this the one of uh, or the 200. You know, one of 200. So you'll have a lot of different things, but when you start talking about the experimental stuff, that's the stuff that collectors and folks that are armor enthusiasts just don't see. Exactly. And there are quite a few experimental vehicles in this collection that are one of, maybe one of three, one of five, that just make the collection complete.